Hey everybody, welcome to Reading the Bible to Cats. I'm trying something different. I'm um, sitting on the floor and I put the, I'm, I put the fish on the, the poof and I have Bug here, Henry's favorite toy, because I'm trying to ensure that he stays in the frame. Oh, <laughs> oops, sorry. I didn't. Oh no, that scared him. The fish scared him. Okay. Well, that kind of failed. That was a YouTube fail. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll remove the fish and try and lure Henry back. No pun intended. Lure. Oop. Let's just turn this thing off. I guess I better hold on a sec. Okay, I turned it off. And now, let me lure him back, and then we'll read 1 Timothy chapter 2. Oh! <gasps> Guster went for bug. That's a big no-no in Henry's mind, because he's claimed this toy is his own, but we will probably fight now. Well, well, let me just turn to the Bible. Can I get a kitty here, please? Can I? We get thank you, thank you. Okay, I guess he's upset. Come on, come on. Well, okay, I can't do this for the whole time. Let us turn into <laughs> the word of God. Um, and we're going to read first Timothy chapter two. Let me turn to oh, here it is. Okay, well, Guster, do you want to play? Where's Guster? Oh, do you see? He's like lurking behind the poof. There. We'll just set Bug there and we'll look at Guster lurking. Um, I think there's a mosquito flying around. And they're going to catch it. That's cute. Oh, <laughs> maybe he got it. Did you catch it? Get it. Get that mosquito. Get it. Get it. Get it, Custer. Get it. Catch it. Get it. <laughs> okay. First Timothy, chapter two. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, <laughs> sorry everyone, Guster's making me laugh. He's really trying to get it. Um, okay, let me try and focus on the word. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. For kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time, and for this purpose I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying, and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. I also want the, wo the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles of, or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. 
Sorry, everybody. It's just that Guster's really going for that mosquito. That is not the Bible talking. It is I who is speaking. We're just a brief little intermission here. And pardon the boxes. I, there's a story about the boxes, which I don't know if I can get into right now. But it's been that way for like a year now. So don't ask. Okay. Um, okay. Back to the Bible. Okay. A woman should learn in quietness and full submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet, for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. But women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety. Okay, everybody, that's the end of 1 Timothy chapter 2. And of course, that is a very controversial um, passage. <laughs> and, um, you know, as a 21st century Western woman, when you, you know, read that passage, it's, it's always like, what? <laughs> like, say what? <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, there's just been a lot of, a lot of stuff written on that, on that passage. Um, I don't, I'll read the study notes. How about that? Okay, this I'm reading from the NIV First Century Study Bible. Women um, in Timothy. Uh, the letter to Timothy differs somewhat from other Pauline instructions regarding women. See 1 Corinthians 11, verses 2 through 16, and 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34. And it is important to compare this passage with other Pauline texts. See notes on Ephesians 5, 21. Uh, through Ephesians 6, verse 9. See also Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 through 19. Oh, no, we don't have a kitty. Okay, let's just look at the fish. We need something to look at. A, a dead fish there. Okay, so... Okay, some scholars have used this passage to argue against Pauline authorship. Ephesian culture was centered on the worship of the female deity Artemis, and women held very high positions of power in Ephesian society. This almost certainly influenced Paul's writings here and might explain Paul's argument for what appears to be a more subservient role for women in the Christian community of Ephesus. Paul was clearly addressing women and men of high status in Ephesus who were prone to excessive luxuries like hair, dress, etc. Women of high status likely played leadership roles in the Ephesian church as they did in Ephesian society. Modesty, self-control, and piety were virtues in both Greek and Jewish culture. One Jewish writer argued, quote, Accordingly, order your wives and daughters not to adorn their heads and their appearances so as to deceive men's souls, unquote. The specific instructions, and that's like they're quoting from, um, you know, that's not the Bible, they're quoting from something. Anyway, the specific instructions are in the context of prayer, which assumes that women were praying publicly as they did in other churches. See 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. Whatever Paul intended about the silence of women in church, it did not apparently apply all the time. The tenor of this passage is primarily about one's posture and prayer, which was how Chrysostom understood it. And Chrysostom was an early church father. Um, and then there's another study note, which I'll read, but I do want, well, I'll get to my thought after I read this other study note. I wish we had a kitty. Let me try and lure one over, but this is like sad to just, oh, here we go. We got one. I caught one. I caught one. There. 
did it. Oh, it's Bug. He loves Bug. Okay. Now let me read the other study note. No. There, he's going to come and get it. Okay. Um, the other study note about verse 11, a woman should learn. The fact that Paul allowed women to learn reveals a somewhat progressive position in ancient culture. See notes on Matthew 28, verse 1, Luke 8, verses 2 through 3, John chapter 4, verse 27, John chapter 20, verse 16. One Jewish opinion in the Talmud says that it is, quote, better to burn the Torah than to teach it to a woman, unquote. The Mishnah says, quote, if any man gives his daughter knowledge of the law, it is as though he taught her lechery, unquote. Paul appears to break from such Jewish opinions that he may well have been aware of. Okay, and then, oh, well, here's another study note. On verse 12, I do not permit. The rhetorical meaning of this text may be understood as, quote, I do not now permit, unquote. Paul may have been correcting a contextual abuse in the Ephesian church rather than making a universal claim about the authority of women to teach. On the other hand, some have interpreted Paul's words as a direct command banning women from the specific office of teacher or elder in the church. Okay, so those are the study notes, and here's my opinion. Let's see. I'm going to turn to the Word of God. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Just look at Henry. Henry, I know you have a, an opinion, which is that human women should stay silent. I know that's you. <laughs> no. <laughs> because you're the Lion King, right? You're the boss. Um, okay. Hold on. Do to do, do. Get a cup of tea. Listen. Um, I'm looking. Hold on. Do to do, do. Hold on one second. I'm just looking something up. If I can spell correctly online. Um, as I'm looking. Okay. Uh, Genesis 20, oh, wait a minute, where is it? Oh, Genesis 21, 12. Okay, here we go. So this is from God. And God said unto Abraham, wait a minute, that's not the right thing. Hold on. Oh, wait. Yeah, I guess it is, but I'm just reading the wrong. Okay. Here's, yeah, Genesis, what did I say? Genesis 21, 12. Okay. But God said to Abraham, okay, do not be distressed about the boy and about your slave. Here it is. Whatever Sarah says to you, listen to her. <laughs> because your offspring will be traced through Isaac. Here's another translation. God said to Abraham, don't be upset about the boy and your servant. Do everything Sarah tells you to do. Because your descendants will be traced through Isaac. Um, where's another translation? Here's another translation. Do what Sarah wants. <laughs> That's God talking. Um, do, and then another translation says, do whatever Sarah tells you. Um, whatever sa Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. <laughs> I'm going to keep reading. Um, do whatever Sarah tells you. Um, in all that Sarah shall say unto thee, hear her voice. Um, listen to what Sarah says. So, okay. Anyway, so there, <laughs> that's my counter to 
you know, kind of globalizing that passage to say that God doesn't want husbands to listen to what their wives have to say about things or what women have to say. Because there you have it. God himself told Abraham, listen to Sarah, listen to the voice of your wife. Do what she says. Do everything she says. Um, and thank you. That's, you know, the Jewish people came through Isaac, through, you know, what Sarah had to say, because God told Abraham, the husband, to listen to his wife and do everything she said. So all that to say, I don't know. I just believe in taking the full counsel of the word, you know, you know, just taking all the information that we can glean from all the different books in the Bible that have to do with um, with a certain topic. In this case, women remaining silent or, um, you know, I think it's, you know, not to say that what Paul was saying in this chapter wasn't valid because it was, you know, for whatever reasons. There was some issue or, um, but then when you read other parts of what he has to say in other epistles, he's like commending the women who were his coworkers. And, you know, some women had um, churches in their household and, you know, and then there's Priscilla and Aquila and, you know, they were a husband wife team and Priscilla educated Apollos, who was a, apparently a very um, talented orator and, you know, was teaching the word, but she, she along with her husband, um, kind of gave him better understanding of, of the word of God. But check everything I'm saying, people, because I'm talking off the top of my head. And who knows, there could be errors in what I'm saying. So do your own research. But I want to see now if I can find that. Equip Priscilla, Priscilla and Aquila, teach Apollos, teach Apollos. Okay, it's uh, the references Acts eighteen twenty four through twenty six. Um, Priscilla and Aquila, the married couple. Priscilla and Aquila teach Apollos so that. He might speak more accurately. I don't know what I'm referencing here. Oh, enterthebible.org. It's okay. That's the website I'm on. Enterthebible.org. Then it says the married couple Priscilla and Aquila teach Apollos so that he might speak quote more accurately unquote. This passage shows Priscilla as a leader. The mention of her name before the name of her husband also in Acts 18 verse 18, Romans 16 verse 3. And two, Timothy chapter 4, 19 suggests that she is the more prominent teacher and minister. Anyway, um, yeah, so just take it all into account, like, you know, the whole kit and caboodle of the Word of God. Just read it all and, and take it all in. Um, you know, I mean, it sounds like this was a very wealthy community and there were some issues there. Um, you know, he does appeal to the creation order. Verse 13, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived, but it was woman, woman who was deceived and became a sinner. But women will be saved um, if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety. I mean, it is it is tough, uh, you know, for a 21st century Western woman to read that. It might not be tough for a lot of women out there, but for this one, it always has been. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's just being honest. 
but you know, like I said, taking all these other passages and and just the love and appreciation that Paul does show for um, women, his co-workers, which he calls them, um, and other in other of his writings, I mean, you know, you just see that he's not harsh. And frankly, you know, that ancient culture, you know, women did not, I mean, in Jesus' day, the Jewish men were not supposed to just, I mean, they, they sat in separate areas in the synagogue. Um, and, uh, I don't know. It was a different time. Like when Jesus talked to the woman at the well, that was a big no-no. And plus she was Samaritan, which was a big no-no. And plus she was a woman. Um, so it just, he was countercultural in that way, Jesus. But he really elevated the role of women. I mean, and that was new for that time. So anyway... I don't know what I really said, but it's, you know, I guess you could quote of me, me thinks the lady doth protest too much, because <laughs> I'm going on and on about this passage. Um, oh, but you know, I do want to say before I end my little dissertation, um, that verse 8 he addresses men too. He says, therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. You know, he addresses them too. Because I guess, you know, there was some anger and there was some, you know, conflict there. And maybe the men were argumentative and angry and disputing things and He's like, you know, schooling them too to, you know, just pray and lift up their holy hands and do so without their anger and their, you know, argumentation. And then, you know, he addresses the women, you know, to just, um, you know, dress w with some modesty. Maybe there was a big focus on like gold and pearls and expensive clothes and, you know, ancient brand names from whatever the, whatever the ancient brand names were that people <laughs> esteemed back then. Like, um, what would it be? Some ancient, um, I'm trying to think what an ancient, um, you know, Prada or Gucci or it, but it'd be something else. I can't I can't think of a name. Um Yeah. I think there were some issues there and he was addressing it. But you all do your own study, do your own research. If it's a thing for you, you look into it. Be like the Bereans and check it out. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I can say. Let's say a prayer. Maybe we can get a kitty over here. Can I get a kitty, please? They're just looking at it from afar, and they're not in the picture. Here's one, though. Oop, blackout. It's a guster blackout. <laughs> He's checking out the fish. Get it, Custer. You're going after Henry's toy. Oh, now he's going for the fish. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I guess he likes the fish now. Well, it's funny because I took the catnip out and he's acting like there's catnip in there. <laughs> I don't... Kitties, go figure. You can't figure them out. Well, this video is going on so long. God bless you if you're still here, and I'll say a prayer. Lord, um, bless the reading of your word, and forgive me for everything I don't understand, 
And I do pray that you help me understand. And um, I ask, I pray that I'm not messing up your word <laughs> by doing this. So just help us all to learn and understand what you want us to understand. And of course, we submit to you, Lord, because you are Lord and, and God, your King and the maker of all that is. So, um, yeah, I'm grateful that you told Abraham to listen to the voice of Sarah, to listen to the voice of his wife. Not only because Sarah's my name, but because <laughs> I'm a woman too. Um, I pray you bless everyone who's watching or listening, Lord. If they are struggling, please companion them in their struggle and let them come through it victoriously, Lord. Help them to overcome. And if they need a job, I pray you provide them the perfect opportunity. If they've lost their hopes and dreams, I pray that you would kindle it afresh within them, that you would give them a dream that comes from you. I guess I pray the same thing for myself because I've had a few dreams that have kind of not materialized, but help us to live life with open hands and expect glad surprises. Pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem, for the healing of Israel, for the hostages. Lord, bring them back. Pray, I pray for, um, I pray for my country during this election cycle. I'm not watching the news, but I'm praying for peace and for a uniting, a uniting of the United States. And I pray for your people all across the world, Lord. I thank you for all the different cultures and people and just the diversity. I love it. We thank you and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I rambled. I was a rambling. But look at, look at that little predator. He's like an apex predator with his prey. What the heck? Esther, did you catch that fish? And did you catch the mosquito too? Did you? I think you caught the mosquito and you caught the fish. Wow. <laughs> I think Henry's a little jealous. Henry, get in the picture. He's going to stand on the word. He was going to step on the Bible, but I guess he's not going to. Um, okay, everybody. Well, let's end it there. Thanks for indulging me. All right, bye.